Bills. Madam Acting Speaker, it's a well known piece of trivia that over the last 63 years Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has survived the political careers of 12 loyal Prime Ministers in the United Kingdom. However, a more interesting figure is the sum of all the Prime Ministers which have led governments across the Commonwealth during her reign. Queen Elizabeth II has had 128 Prime Ministers across her realms, including 14 New Zealanders, 11 Canadians and 13 Australians to compare, contrast, listen to and assent to. There's no doubt there's a special place in Her Majesty's heart for her first Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill. Churchill remains unique among her Prime Ministers for having served two monarchs. Churchill, with Elizabeth's father, led the country and the Commonwealth through their darkest days. On King George VI's death, Churchill broadcast these immortal words. During these dark day last days, the King walked with death, as if death were a companion, an acquaintance whom he recognised and did not fear. I, whose youth was passed in the August, unchallenged and tranquil, glories of the Victorian era, may well feel a thrill in invoking once more the prayer and the anthem, God save the Queen. Death was something which Churchill and King George VI generation recognised, an unwanted companion to everyday life brought by total war, but Churchill's seemingly audacious joy when invoking that prayer was well founded. Truly, the generations since have enjoyed another august, unchallenged and tranquil age relative to the horror which characterised the world wars. There's no denying we have our own sinister challenges to deal with today, but Queen Elizabeth's reign has coincided with the most peaceful and free age in world history by any standard. With the celebration of our sovereign's milestone, we can also applaud ourselves in, as a society in her time. The advances in wealth, inventiveness and international peace brought about by this new Elizabethan age uh, achievements we can all be proud of. Constancy and commitment have characterised our Queen during this time. She has adjusted to the myriad changes in attitudes and fashions during 63 years on the throne without ever compromising the fundamental aspects of her role. <laughs> Elizabeth II has been the ideal constitutional monarch. As former Prime Minister John Howard recently said, she shows an appreciation that her privileged position derives from the consent of those who recognise her as Queen. In one of her early Christmas addresses, the Queen placed herself saying, I have behind me not only the splendid traditions and the annals of more than a thousand years, but the living strength and majesty of the Commonwealth, of societies old and new, of lands and races different in history, but origins by, but all by God's will, united in spirit and in aim. New South Wales is just one of those unique and yet still relatively new societies, bound in the same spirit of liberal democracy, striving for the same aim that is an improvement of the lot of all people under the crown. Surely this unity of spirit and aim is something we should cherish and celebrate. The value of this unity is something the Queen has understood better than anyone. Some still don't. Republicans, in a manner akin to tempestuous teenagers, have attempted to destroy our institutions so that their feelings of angst and uncertainty about our country can be resolved with a clean, or rather bare, slate. Her Majesty's great achievements have been basically to keep it together in spite of all this. Mainstream Australians continually reject the Republican vision. In an age where public discourse has devolved into adolescent posturing and incessant ignorance on social media, this has been no simple ta task. Misplaced calls for a free Australia frees us from the monarchy that is still sometimes heard amongst the political classes in this country. Drastic constitutional change is always for the benefit of the political class as they are in a position to command change and con con comprehend its significance. It must be avoided. In an age of republicanism by stealth, 
where without the consent of the people, vestiges of our constitutional system of cultural inheritance have been surreptitiously stripped away, the popularity of the monarchy remains at an all-time high. That the ideal of monarchy survives at all into the 21st century is largely the, do the doing of Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen's modest, dutiful character has maintained respect for the monarchy, I argue, for all our benefit. Queen Elizabeth II and her governments provided two quality, rare, exp rarely experienced together outside constitutional monarchies, surety and liberty. We are comfortable and reassured because there is no question of her removal, but there is no question we are also free. The modest but sincere acts of celebration and appreciation across the Commonwealth are nothing like the strained praises of a despotic regime. Those living with Queen Elizabeth II as their head of state are the freest in the world. This is the miracle of our system of government. We rely on the sobriety and wisdom of the people. We are lucky that our sovereign, a welcome constitutional fixture, shows the same wisdom and sobriety. If anyone exhibits what, is mean, what it means to have a sense of duty in this day and age, it is the Queen. The Queen remains the world's poster girl for public service. One historian has described her as Elizabeth the Good, Elizabeth the Dutiful. Queen Victoria once said of Elizabeth I that she was a great Queen but a bad woman. The second Elizabeth, our Elizabeth on the other hand, has managed to unite royal greatness with a personal goodness that has ensured the survival of the monarchy. At this point in Her Majesty's reign, as a people, we do not walk with death. We are free, we are unchallenged and we are tranquil. A special golden jubilee coin bore a Latin inscription which reads when translated, the love of the people is the Queen's protection. On this measure, the Queen is well protected in New South Wales. God save the Queen, ever longer may she reign.